Hello and welcome to The Unique CPA with your host, Randy Crabtree. We're committed to creating a thriving community of accounting professionals who are physically and mentally healthy, fulfilled, and energized by their work. Our ultimate goal is to elevate the reputation of the accounting profession and vastly improve the lives of those in it. The Unique CPA is brought to you by Trimerit, the specialty tax professionals. Today, our guest is Andrew Lassis. Andrew is, uh, first off, a great guy. Andrew and I have known each other for a few years. I've been on his podcast a couple of times. Just found out I'm one of the few people that's been a two-time guest on Tech Talk for Accountants, uh, which is a lot of uh, a fun show. Andrew, uh, for the last 10 years, uh, had a company which is Tech for Accountants with the number four on it, which was pretty cool. And uh, just this last year, he merged his firm in with RightWorks, and a lot of that is what we're going to talk about today. And before we do that, Andrew, welcome to the Unique CPA. Well, thank you for having me. Big fan of you and everything that you do, which is why you are in the two timers club. And I think you were actually going to be the three timer club, but you got COVID. Yeah, so we're still going to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, was this just like two weeks ago or three weeks ago? Yeah, or I no? mean, this was yeah. this was not long ago. I'm not sure yeah. if it was for this or for that. Right. But we were supposed to connect and yeah. COVID got in the way. I was out at an event that Michael Lee out in Arizona put together and, and got COVID. So I'm blaming Michael, even though he didn't have COVID. And it was very mild. So I was very fortunate. It was, yeah. I honestly got home on a, Tuesday and was out camping on Friday because it, it felt pretty good. And, and so not too bad. But all right. So we didn't come here to talk about my ailments, but we could do that for a long time. <laughs> I have a great Arizona COVID story. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we jump into it, let's hear your, your No, we can't hear that yet. Before we do that, I want to talk about RightWorks a little bit because we have our conference coming up at the uh, end of July, July 22nd. 23rd and 24th in Rosemount, Illinois, which is basically O'Hare Airport. Uh, the Bridging the Gap Conference, which uh, you were at, I think, a last second attendee last year because there wasn't there a childbirth happening right about that time? Yeah. Yeah. I, I had told you, I was like, I would love if, if there's any opportunity. Here's the catch, though. I'm having a daughter like two <laughs> weeks beforehand. So I am a big supporter of everything Randy does. <laughs> well, we got you there. So the daughter must have been born. Everything was good. And you came out and you actually spoke. You were on a panel at the yeah, conference as yeah. well. I was on the panel with Blake Oliver and Alan Choi on AI. And we found this out that night. And I wish I had known it in the morning. The day we spoke about AI it is actually the same date, whatever it was, like August, October, the date that Skynet becomes self-aware in the Terminator. <laughs> it was the same date that we spoke on it. I didn't find it out until oh, wow. afterwards. It's like, gosh, that's so good. Oh, that would have been awesome to tie that in. You're so good at that stuff. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I know nothing. I just talk and go on to the next thing. All right, let me keep going on this. So, so the conference, like I said, end of July, uh, Andrew will be out there speaking again this year. Excited about that. And also excited about the fact that RightWorks is our platinum sponsor this year. So we greatly appreciate that, which is uh, one of our top tier sponsors and, and really looking forward to, to seeing Andrew there. And any other RightWorks people coming out with you? I believe so, but that's above my pay grade. I just <laughs> get told you're going to that thing in Chicago. You're going to talk about <laughs> security and WISP and there will be other stuff there that is in other departments you don't have to worry about it, which is actually great because in tech for accountants world, I had to orchestrate everything and I hated orchestrating everything. And now coming back around, I remember, so my daughter was born. I said, the only thing I could do would be go and speak. However, we yes. can't put together all the sponsorship and having people out there and things. But if you'd like me to chip in somewhere, be happy to. And you're like, do you know anything about AI? All right. Just talk with Blake and Ellen. <laughs> there you go. You could do it. And, and uh, actually, I ran into Ellen last week in uh, in San Diego, and I'm not sure she's coming out this year. I, I'm hoping she is, but yeah, she's uh, she's a lot of fun. And Blake, the three of you did a great job out there. And then, so last year you were out there last second. 
uh, not even as a sponsor, which is great because, like I said at the beginning, we're friends. But this year, I'm actually contractually obligated to talk to you <laughs> because of your sponsorship. Exactly. <laughs> Just a joke because I would talk to you anytime, anywhere. And, and Rightworks is a pretty amazing company doing really cool things. So let's go into that a little bit. You know, you've had you you had tech for accountants for years, and this actually surprised me. I, I I didn't realize this was happening, so you know, shame on you for not letting me know what was happening out there. <laughs> yeah, speaking <laughs> of contractual <laughs> obligations and lots of lawyers. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I want before we even start talking about what you're doing at RightWorks, let's get into the decision and 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 why this and why RightWorks and and the whole process you went through and and decision making on this merger. Yeah. So in the accountant only niche as far as the cybersecurity world goes, or at least the ones that you'll see at conferences. You'll see Tech for Accountants, you'll see Right Networks, formerly Right Networks, now Right Works, you'll see Tech Guru IT, you'll see Practice Protect. Those are the four. And then Randy Johnson, K2 Enterprises, they're around as well, but more on the MSP for the small business accounting firms, 45, 50 and under is really where you'd see us for. And being in that world, I know where each person or each company is very strong and very weak. So we all kind of worked together anyways with a, okay, you're not going to be the right fit for us, however you should talk to these people and vice versa. So it, it was actually a really small world that we were part of. And uh, RightWorks approached me in May 23. And they said, basically, I am trying to, to have a WISP department. So the written information security plan, everybody with a P10 is required to have one. And so we're really looking to augment our current offering. And apparently you're the only person <laughs> that is doing this. Uh, I, I found an article on CPA Practice Advisor that didn't have your name attached to it. And then I read the article and the article was about you. So, uh, so I was basically the top 10 results for... IRS WISP for accounting mm. firms, accountants, wow. CPAs, enrolled agents It is just a very, very narrow niche thing that in 2019, the IRS started requiring. My own accountant reached out to me and he was like, hey, could you do me a favor? I need this WISP thing. Can you help? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he's not even a, a client, but he's just like, can you do me a favor? And then so I was like, sure, how hard can it be? I'm an IT professional. And it took me a week to put together this favor for him. And I was kind of resentful because it was just a, sure, let me do it. And I'm, I'm putting together the hourly that I should have charged him. But then I kind of came to the conclusion. I took a step back. And I was like, if it was this hard for me and I know what I'm doing, there's no way that people that don't know what they are doing will be able to do this without having some sort of assistance. And so I started creating a lot of free content around it. I created the first template that accountants could use, downloaded over 70,000 different firms have downloaded it at this point. So just kind of carved it out for myself. And so RightWorks mm -hmm. said, we're looking to do WISP and it makes more sense if we just work together with you. And it's not going to be just a tech for accountants and right networks, just pass business back and forth. What we're really looking for is to grow our own organization. And so since you're pretty much the only person by default, you are the best and worst. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so would like to work together. And I kind of saw the, the opportunity there because the reality in just the tech for accountants world, the, the 10 and under firms, when I was talking about where each organization sort of dominates in this space, really the, the 15 and under will have some crossover with tech guru and they would be the 10 plus and where the 15 under is sort of each of our sweet spots. And then, but right networks with 700 employees has the ability to service 
so many more than we were able to with a lot of really, really smart people. So I kind of saw the, this is a really good opportunity. And for the smaller firms, nobody's really figured it out except for us. Yep. And so it augments into them. And then with the larger firms that we used to have issues with, not issues, but it wasn't, it didn't fit the model as well right, right. as the smaller ones did. And so having an organization that's like, if it's less than 100, that's our sweet spot. And having people that know what they're doing, really, really smart people, like that was another one of the things that had attracted me to them was the people that I would speak to through the process of the due diligence and acquisition. Really, really smart people that started nice. questioning our own numbers from QuickBooks based off of models and i i was very very reluctant to release any information because i mean the reality if the deal doesn't happen i can't give them the ammunition to compete with us so until really the spot where i was like this is this has to be real was the guy that was spearheading it it said you know we're running all these models and projections and we're looking at the numbers and do you think you could go back in and just kind of audit this category it doesn't match any of our models that we've created with your very general information and i'm like you're crazy it's straight from quickbooks <laughs> and we have our accountant that looks at it we have internal people that look at it. and he was right oh, wow. and i was like there is no way you put in that much effort or even mentioned this if this was not something that you all were a hundred percent serious about and not just saying, well, this would be a great opportunity. Think about it. Because they have 700 employees. We have 12. It's not that hard to recreate 12, but yeah. they don't have me and my team that's only done this for the last five years of specifically accounting firms. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty awesome. It sounds like obviously they're very serious and and just seeing the tools that they have in place when they're analyzing things, uh, pretty amazing. So let's, before I move on, uh, anything else? Other reasons, other positives, that, things that, uh, you know, have been like surprises? Yeah, this has been awesome in the, in the whole process. So I've only worked at complete chaos companies before I started my own. And even that was craziness for the first couple years of just trying to figure out how it worked. Yep. So I've never seen how organizations at our peak we had 50 employees when we were everything to everyone and covid and poor management poor leadership on my part down to 12 but then really started ramping up and focusing on how to grow the company and grow a real company not just something that can make money but something that can make a difference so I had worked at large organizations before that were just pure chaos. I had worked at a company that had 500 employees and our ticketing system was use your personal Gmail and email your boss about how the customer, <laughs> what was going on. And that's all I knew. So coming into, I mean, we figured it out along the way ourselves, but then seeing how a real company operates and the systems they have in place. And I had a feeling that I would learn this. And just for my own knowledge, I've never worked inside of another company. And seeing how they do things and navigate things. And then in retrospect, thinking, gosh, if we had done this, we would have been making so much more money if I knew how to be <laughs> smart like these people. <laughs> oh, that's a huge lesson as business owners. And, and this is probably something I talked about on the podcast as business owners. We often don't realize that we have shortcomings, <laughs> that there's things we don't like doing because we think we need to do everything. And so one of the biggest benefits for me when I stepped down as managing partner is realizing that I didn't have to do everything. And there's people that do things so much better than I do. And having them in those positions has just made our business so much better, processes being one of them. And so I, I was going to ask you if that, you know, if you've seen, you know, the light that way that, uh, yeah, there is there are people that should be doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Yeah, well, there's things that were in our company that were just favors that people would do that have entire departments. So we do cybersecurity for thousands of firms. So 
my lead tech, I tell them do our cybersecurity too. And we're just another client that we manage. And then here, here are the 20 people on the internal cybersecurity team. And there's right. 20 full-time employees doing what was a favor from our person. <laughs> yeah. So really understanding how you can segment different aspects of the company and grow it, like you said, having specialists that aren't just, can you do me a favor? Right. Because we all had our main roles, but there were a lot of favors and side things. Yep. Our marketing person is also a tech that just takes some stuff that I do and just he's very organized. Yep. And it's like, you know, a lot of places have marketing departments or at least a person <laughs> that's in charge of this. So I, I learned a lot just in seeing how it operates. And so it's good just for my own knowledge of really understanding the inner workings of a good, strong company. Yep. And not to say that we weren't strong, no, you were. but really understanding what systems look like, checks and balances. And a lot of the due diligence, they would ask questions where I'd be like, eh, it's about this. And they're <laughs> like, can you show me the actual <laughs> numbers? <laughs> it's like, well, I mean... <laughs> You know, in the past, historically <laughs> in this company, I just say something and everyone just accepts it. <laughs> All right. So, well, bottom line, sounds like Great Works has their stuff together, has their works together. I don't know if that's a good way to say it, but they've got their that's stuff the right together. Way to say it. Uh, the right, oh, the right way. Look at us. We can we can play off this right works all the time. Um, now, with the you going in there and all that, there's the WISP and, and you know some key service offerings that you are at, with RightWorks are rolling out or getting moving. So let's just expand then on the services that are the key things that you, you're rolling out with RightWorks. So the main offering, sort of what spearheaded all of this, would be the WISP. And for those that maybe had heard of it but aren't really familiar, so the WISP, the Written Information Security Plan, if you're renewing your P10, one of the questions that you'd see either on the website or if you're filling out the W12 says, I am aware that I am required to have, they use the word data security plan on the form and then WISP on everything front facing because the IRS needs to make things complicated. So they have that requirement for when you're renewing a P10. And then when you sign off for it, it says, I understand under the penalties of perjury and criminal charges and losing my license that all this information is correct and accurate. So just how human beings work, we see this all the time with, here is the service agreement to this software that you're buying. Do you accept it all? And it's, well, if I want the software, I have to say yes, don't I? So if I want my P10 to get renewed, I have to say yes so that I can get to the finish line. But there's a lot of consequences that are tied with not being truthful on that when you accept the terms. And yes, it's a piece of compliance, but it's also it's good business practice to be protecting your client's data. Uh -huh. Accountants, one of the most trusted professionals in anyone's corner. So yes, you are legally required to be doing this, but also, I mean, on the tech side, we are not legally required to be protecting client data, which I think is insane, different yeah. story for a different time. But we're not legally required to protect our client's data. Of course we do, mm -hmm. but we're not required to. So could you imagine the flip side of, well, yeah, we don't spend money to protect your data. We're, we're not required to, though. How, how would you feel? <laughs> yeah. right? No, right. So step one, the, the WISP is really taking a look at what you currently have in place. And nobody's going to be 100,000% perfect when it comes to cybersecurity. And even the gigantic organizations, it's still just a 99.99999%. But having the awareness of here are things that could happen. And should this worst case scenario happen, what are the steps that we need to take so that when there's a fire in this analogy, there's a fire, you know how to use the fire extinguisher and aren't just figuring it out 
when there is a fire and the stakes are really high. Yep. So it kind of plays into that. And so that's the the first product that Rightworks we just launched a couple of weeks ago, mid-May. So you get the awareness of here is what you have, here's what you're doing well, here are some places that you could improve. And then our other offering, which is called the total security, is going to basically plug those holes as well as we're hitting another legal requirement. This isn't on the IRS side, but the FTC put in place the safeguards rule, which says not only do you need to have this plan in place for how you're protecting your client's data, but how are you actually doing it? And you are required to have this security in place. So people can come to us to get the awareness and take that information, do with it what you will, as well as have problems remediated that are also in alignment with another piece of compliance from the FTC safeguards rule. And essentially, I'm, most people that hire us do not have a strong understanding of it. Just when I hire an accountant, I, I know enough to get by. I know that a write-off doesn't mean that it's free money. But <laughs> aside from that, nice. I'm, I'm not the expert of experts. So I hire somebody to do it. And my accountant says, well, here's the 1040 that I've prepared and your 1120S. What do you think? And I say, well, I think I hired you as a professional. So <laughs> looks right to me. And we see that on the IT side too. So people get peace of mind where we just white glove, do everything for you so that you know all of the compliance boxes are checked and that you're protecting your client data. So not just because you're legally required, but also that you care. Yep. And so it's not just the, hey, we, we have, you know, we use a portal that's secure and all that. It's like, okay, but if it's not, if somebody breaks into your computer, if somebody, you know, hacks something, what are the steps you're going to do? You have to, you have to be able to flip the switch and go, boom, we need to do this, 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 this go, go, go. So it's as much of the technology in place, it sounds like, and you can correct me, as it is the, what do we do if still, because nobody's going to ever be a hundred percent, you know, uh, safe with their data. Is that kind of a synopsis of it? That's, that's a perfect synopsis of it. In sports, the WISP is the playbook and the total security is actually playing the game. So you can have all of the things on paper for in a perfect world, this is what's going to happen and how we are going to avoid all of these potential issues. But things happen. I mean, that's just the reality of the world. Yep. Dell just got hacked a couple weeks ago. They're a pretty big company, you know? Yep. <laughs> so, and then they get class action lawsuits and all these things. But when these things happen, the biggest part on the, and think about it, you're the victim of a crime too. And, right. then, and then you have to prove why you're an innocent victim right. versus a participating negligent victim that caused this to happen. But afterwards, it's putting together the story of here are all the things that I did to prevent something like this from happening. And from there is really where the penalties start to get assessed. And if you've done everything, I forget the exact legal term, but it's something that a reasonable person for a organization of this size could and would put in place. Did you do that? And then there's disclosure laws for each state where you have clients. And so all these things are laid out in the WISP so that, okay, I am located in Florida. I have 30 days to disclose this to my clients while I remediate this. And a lot of the guys that have gotten hit really hard, their big thing that they get hit on and in firms when it comes to fines and fees, along with being the victim of a crime and having to remediate that, the big ones that happen are the failure to disclose to their clients that it happened. Mm -hmm. Right. Which you would think it was something that was kind of interesting to me. I mean, it's just, okay, I have to tell people. I mean, it's embarrassing and horrible, terrible. Hey, by the way, your data was stolen and it's my fault. See you in April for <laughs> getting your things done again, right? 
or sooner for the lawsuit. Yeah, well, and I mean, the cost for remediation, the losses that can come from it, right? And the loss of trust. The if someone is Googling you and doing research before deciding to work with you. Yep. So you've got opportunity cost, lost opportunity cost, clients that say, okay, you were not protecting me. I no longer want to keep doing business with you. And, you know, the internet, it's, it's permanently yep. on there. You could Google CPA firm data breach, and there's a handful of them that six figure plus settlements off of you didn't tell anyone Oof. in time. Oh man, that's not good. Okay, so so obviously, you know, you can put everything in place and and do what you do and have your processes, but you know, bottom line is you still security, cybersecurity in general is important and so how do you try to mitigate these types of things happening? How do you work with firms to to make sure that you minimize the the potential of this? Yeah, a common misconception, and we, we hear this all day, every day. Well, I have Norton, so we're protected. And just take a step back. Okay, Dell got hacked. You think they forgot Norton? <laughs> you think that was that was the thing? So there's a million different ways that things can go wrong. So it's about having all the different things in place. This is another thing we see a lot. Say you use the same email and password in a bunch of different spots. And I know right. most people are guilty of this. Yep. So, but you have a, a crazy good password, but you use the same password for your work email as you do on the Justin Bieber fan site. <laughs> the Justin Bieber fan site gets hacked and they didn't have proper protection on your password. So now that is out in the open and something called a credential stuffing attack where you have this email address and this password combination Right. Let's try it in your email. Let's try it on bankofamerica.com. Let's try it on wellsfargo.com. Let's try all these different banks to see where we can get in. And so having different passwords in everything that you do, but how do you memorize it? So then we have password manager to help mitigate that. But suppose, okay, the Justin Bieber fan site isn't the one that got hacked and your work email was the thing that got hacked and they can see the passwords that you were using. Well, now if we have two-factor authentication on top of that, even if they have the username password, you're still protected. It's It was a close call, but we're still protected. So these are things, okay, Norton wouldn't be able to stop that from happening because that's not a virus and there's countless other examples of ways that their actors could get in and do a lot of damage and and my, i use the example of email most people think okay you got into my email you can see my back and forth my clients don't email me sensitive information which is a lie they all do nobody uh, uses your portal but <laughs> pretend that they all did and there wasn't sensitive information in your email. Well, there's an email from Bank of America for your statement. Okay, so you have a Bank of America account. I go to Bank of America. Well, you didn't use the same password. Great job. I'm going to click that forgot password button. And where does the reset go? Right. My email. Yep. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> there's just so many different ways that having the proper security in place where you don't have to think about these things. I think about them because I've seen probably every horrible scenario that can happen to somebody when we get new clients that aren't thinking, I need to be proactive about this. But a my entire company got encrypted and I lost all my data. What can you do for me? And it's like, well, if we can build a time machine and <laughs> set up a proper backup, then we could mitigate this. Otherwise, we've got giant problem on our hands, giant disclosures that need to be made. A lot of uncomfortable phone calls, emails, talking to regulatory authorities, and all these things that, again, you were the victim of a crime and then yeah. getting punished right. for being the victim. But there are things that you can do to mitigate these things. So again, on that analogy, maybe don't go into shady streets in the middle of the night 
we were in Antigua a couple of years ago and went down one street and it was dark outside and, and we were like I don't think walking down this street anymore is a good idea. So let's go back to the main square where there's lots of lights and lots of people that are happy. <laughs> not not this street that has just four <laughs> scary looking people yeah. a, a couple hundred yards ahead. So avoiding these things from happening, there are precautions that you can take and whether or not you're aware of them, that's why having an expert helps make it easy for you you don't have to think about it know about it it's which is what you are you. exactly you are an expert all right i know a thing or two you do uh, i've always been impressed so let's go back to wisp for a second because this is not like this wasn't yesterday that people had to do this this originally started i think in 2019 uh, and then what you said in last year this is when they made it sound like hey you're going to go to jail if you don't do this so they really realized people weren't taking it serious and so this is not, there's no de minimis rule on this. Hey, I do five tax returns and, and so I don't have to do this. I mean, it, right? This is anybody has a P10. The only caveat is if you have an enrolled agent designation and do not do any returns is the only exception to it, which I guess that makes sense if you're just staying an enrolled agent for the love of the game, but not doing returns. Yep. That's the only exception for it. So wait, enrolled agent only? What if you're a CPA and don't do any returns? Enrolled agent is what the IRS states. Really? Yeah. So, All right, so having a P10. Even if I don't do, I'm a CPA. I have to have, I mean, through Trimerit, I'm sure we have this in place and all that, but company-wide... An individual doesn't need to have this. The company that they work for needs to have this, right? So, so an individual does need to have it. But what a lot of organizations do, especially if you have the same security across the board for all of your employees, it's for the most part a copy paste change the name because your clients are all located in the same place. Your company policy is the same across the board your usage policies, all these things are the same for employees A, B, C, D onward. So you can pretty much copy paste, change a couple things for each person, but compliance requirements is for each individual person that holds a P10 with the exception of enrolled agent designation <laughs> that does not do a single return is, is what the compliance requirements are. Okay, my renewal is September. I guess I'm not renewing my CPA this year. I'm done. So. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 62. It's time to let it go anyways. What's, what's uh, the worst that'll happen? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I won't be able to have letters after my name anymore. So, I mean, can I put former CPA? <laughs> Why not? Oh, that's not your expertise. That's, yeah, that's 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 what I pay very expensive lawyers for to answer certain <laughs> questions. The requirements, though, so on the WISP, that's where the requirements fall. But then we spoke on the total security FTC yep. safeguards rule, which does have two different thresholds. There's 5,000 consumer records, that is not 5,000 customers, 5,000 consumer records and up has higher requirements than 5,000 consumer records and below. So a lot of people confuse the word consumer record with customer. I paid a very expensive former FTC prosecutor to get me the answer to this question because it's, okay, why would you use the word consumer record? customer would yeah. make sense so a consumer record is basically if you have quickbooks online for a handful of customers and can see their vendors see their employees if you're doing payroll if you have access to the clients customers and vendors and employees each one of those counts as one record so for instance our own quickbooks online has 26,000 customers inside of it. So my accountant, if we were his only client, has access to those 26,000 records plus all of our vendors and things like that. So 
he's subject to it just because there's over 5,000. So the people that really don't fall into it or the companies that don't fall into it would be the mom and pop. I do returns for my friends and family, no business returns. All right, you do 10, 10 40s a year as a favor for some friends. Sure. There's still requirements for it as far as encryption and protection goes, but it's not the full thing that the FTC is requiring for basically if you're doing a return for an organization, you're probably going to have access to all these things. Right. So you're saying on this is the data security end of things or cybersecurity end of things. The WISP is still, you got a P10, you do a return, you need to do it. And if you're going to have a P10 and you're a CPA and don't do returns, you have to do it. If you have a, your EA and have a P10 and don't do returns, you don't have to. I think I got that's, it. Though. Yeah, that's how it how it currently reads because most people, okay, I'm only doing a handful of returns. This doesn't apply to me. And again, it's not just, well, it's legally required, but it's also kind of doing a good thing for your clients. Good practice. But yes. I understand too, it costs money. You've never had this problem happen before. Nobody likes spending money on things that they don't think that apply to them. I mean, that's a, right. that's a fair way to feel about it. Okay. So I'm going to need you to call my parents and tell them I can't do their tax return anymore. Well, if you're not charging them, <laughs> then you wouldn't technically need a P10. I mean, anybody can do anybody's taxes, right? Oh, see, I didn't know there was that loophole. I just could do a bunch of free taxes. <laughs> and not have a P-10. And, and not have a P-10. Yeah, because you need the P-10 to be able to charge to do people's taxes. Got but it. anybody can do anything. I mean, my father, he he passed a couple years ago, and I got to see his return that he did himself by hand that mm -hmm. the IRS <laughs> politely said, your math, your addition isn't even correct. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at it. There's three things that could do this so much better than yes. you could. Did Why? he put cents on the end of it? Did he round it? Because I've seen I, it where people put, you know, 22 cents. <laughs> I don't recall. I, I mean, his, his estate things, <laughs> I could find out. No, I, that's I, don't, right. I don't think that he put cents, but all right. the return was done by hand incorrectly. All right. Well, we have lots of people out there that can help people that are doing that. Uh, all right. We're going down the rabbit hole now, so we should uh, we should probably uh, wrap it up. And I'm going to do a quick wrap, but then I'll let you do anything, too. So the bottom line is, anytime I talk to you about this stuff, you scare the heck out of me. And so, uh, but for a good reason. This is things we need to follow. These are best practices, but not just best practices. These are legally, we're legally obligated to do this. And if we don't, this is where we can have uh, massive issues I mean, there's just moral issues, too. Hey, we just let people's data go. We didn't tell them about it. And, and now we're responsible for this. So so from that standpoint, this is very important. People need to take this serious. It's not just to check the box, like you said, uh, when you get your P10. Yeah, we're, we're good. I've done all this. You have to yeah, almost even just go through an audit of the processes and everything that you're doing. So, So what I'm going to highly recommend everybody do is two things. One, come to Bridging the Gap Conference <laughs> uh, because Andrew is going to be there and other people with RightWorks and you'll be able to talk to them there, but reach out to Andrew before that even if you have any questions about anything that's going on because this this is not, I don't want to do a scare factor, but bottom line is you have to do this and if you haven't looked at it yet and you don't feel you've got the right processes in place already, it has to happen. So, so you know, if you can, RightWorks is, like I said before, a platinum sponsor of our conference. It's really excited to have them there. They'll be there to answer any questions. But in reality, you know, if you have any concerns, don't wait till there. Do it now. Reach out to Andrew. All right. Let me give you a, a chance. I just wanted to get that in there. All right. So a final plug. Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, Andrew Lassise, L-A-S-S-I-S-E. Or you can go to tech4accountants.net and there's a lot of resources there. We can do an audit for you just for peace of mind to let you know this is where you stand. We won't put together everything for you, but just a here we did a quick run through and we've done a million of these. So it doesn't take us long to put the pieces together to just give you some awareness of where you currently stand and a requirement that it's almost like the FTC wrote it 
for IT companies, one of the requirements is you have to hire a qualified individual with real world experience. So you're also legally not allowed to DIY, which is on the IT company side, it's like, thank you. Yes. <laughs> but I see on my side, it's kind of, you aren't legally required to hire somebody to do your taxes, but you really ought to. Yes, you should. All right. And then just to clarify on that. So even though you're with RightWorks now, Tech for Accounts is, is still a live uh, website, and that's where you go for the WISP information. You can go to either of them. I'm just, honestly, I'm more familiar on the Tech for Accountants side. So I could tell you if you go to Solutions and download free WISP template, that will get you a lot of access and a lot of good resources. And on the RightWorks side, they have pretty much the same thing. But since I'm not involved with the day-to-day -day in there, I wouldn't even know who to talk to to make sure that it goes through. So Got it. Understandable. All right. So people know the where they go. They can go to RightWorks. They can go to Tougher Accounts. They can see you on LinkedIn. They can go look, listen to the podcast, which is... Tech Talk for Accountants. Tech Talk. Not TED Talk. Tech Talk for Accountants. And then last question. We got all that data out there. Really looking forward to seeing you in July for sure. We Actually, I swear you were on the podcast before because I swear I asked you this question before, but every guest gets this question. So, so we just talked about a lot of really cool stuff, um, at least for uh, tech geeks and accountants <laughs> and accountant geeks. I'm going to put geeks in the same category, um, but it's stuff we need to know when you're not thinking tech, when you're not figuring out ways to safeguard uh, the, this profession. What do you do for fun? What are your outside of work passions? Outside of work currently? I'm training for my fifth marathon, and I hadn't thought about it until you just asked this. I'm going to be at the Chicago Marathon in October. Oh, so wow. So I'll stop by and say hi. And then my wife is turning that into a trip. Travel a lot. We're leaving for uh, Europe in a couple days. And I cook a mean steak. I was just at a really expensive steakhouse the other day and was almost like, <laughs> All right, you're you're charging thirty dollars an ounce, and me at home is so much better <laughs> than than you guys are. So that's, those are the things that I've currently been geeking out on. Probably will be for a while. All right, running, travel, and steak cooking. Nice. I like the combo. I haven't had that combo before as an answer, so <laughs> that's a nice one. Yeah, it's they don't play that well into each other, but traveling, food. And doing things for a really long time that nobody else cares about or appreciates. <laughs> that's, that's where I fall. Right. Well, you're the expert at that, which is nice. You have to have an expertise. Besides the tech, you've got all this other outside of work passion. So, well, Andrew, fun as always. Always great talking to you. Uh, uh, we're going to have to schedule. I want to be a three-peat guest now on your podcast. So I'm very competitive. So I need to get that third one under my right. belt. Um, so we'll talk about that. I would love for you to be the first. I think you were the first two-peat guest. Oh, it's, man. It's possible it was either you or Joe Woodard. I I, I think Woodard might have beat you for two times. But, All right. but you could beat him for three times. <laughs> nice. I was just on his podcast. I love talking to Joe. He's a great guy. He's so just when you talk to him, it's just like, oh, you're the best person on earth. He speaks so well. <laughs> yeah. No, he 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 definitely knows the stuff. So that's pretty cool. All right. Well, Andrew, thanks again. We'll see you in less than two months. Uh, we're recording on May 29th, just so anybody knows. We'll probably release this in the next two weeks, but we'll be seeing Andrew soon and hopefully to see all of you at the Bridging the Gap Conference in July. Awesome. Well, Randy, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today on The Unique CPA. You can find the show notes for today's episode and learn more about Trimerit at theuniquecpa.com. Remember to subscribe and leave a five-star rating on your favorite podcasting app. And join us next time for more expertise and insights on The Unique CPA. Professionalproductions.net